हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू चेस क्लासिक्स यू मस्ट नो एपिसोड टेन वेल लर्निंग द क्लासिक्स इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ योर इंप्रूवमेंट एंड आई बिलीव दैट दिस इज अ ग्रेट सीरीज दैट हेल्प्स यू टू टेक योर गेम टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस इन दिस क्लासिक्स आर दीज आर गेम्स ऑफ द ग्रेट मास्टर्स ऑफ द पास्ट एंड वॉट आई डू इज आई चूज टेन मोमेंट्स इन दैम so that you can guess the moves it remains very interesting uh, and we'll be starting with today's classic so a warm welcome to everyone uh, who are here and thank you for joining in can you guess who is the player whose classics we are going to watch today we are going to study from a great players game but just any guess and why am i like placed in the air because all the things will come around me welcome welcome to shubham vijay krishna aditi aban ahmed yashwan naik ashwat raja oh i missed the copyright strike on ad ad in the house welcome adiban adiban says if sagar doesn't come in one minute i'll use the same title and even thumbnail and start stream वेलकम अदिबान सो द ग्रेट प्लेयर यू नो दीज आर प्लेयर्स ऑफ द पास्ट दीज आर नॉट रिसेंट प्लेयर्स हुज गेम्स वी आर वॉट गोइंग टू लुक एट दीज आर प्लेयर्स वी सॉ गेम्स ऑफ स्टेनेट्स वी सॉ गेम्स ऑफ कैपा ब्लैंका बॉटवेनिक एंड सो मेनी ग्रेट्स सो हु डू यू थिंक whose game are we going to watch today that is the question meanwhile while you guess i'm going to bring a uh, this into the picture social media of chess base india i would very much uh, urge you if you enjoy the content follow us on all the social media and also review us on google that's what amruta always tells me to tell on streams okay so Carlson, no. Oh, Akhil Khare, very nice, very nice, guys. Vijay Krishna is right. Om Prakash, Ameta is right. Fantastic. So some of you have got the answer. Here is the chess board. Oops, not. I need to put the position that is right from the first move. Not to reveal anything. So here's the position. uh and uh, here is the timer we are going to do it within an hour so be very focused and uh, i would love that all of you give it your all here is the image of today's session so who is this on the left none other than the great great bobby fisher and on the right is another world champion again trivia time for you guys who is that world champion on the right who is the player on the right over there Yes, Saptak Chakraborty, you are right. Mayur Abhishek Ki, you are also right here. On the right is Tigran Petrosian, and we have seen one of the games of Petrosian on this uh in this series, right? Uh, yes, second episode, Pacman Petrosian Pacman, the Queen Sacrifice. So please check it out if you haven't. Now the thing is, there was. you know fisher the lone american wanted to take down the soviet players and uh, soviet union had world champions since a long time so you had botwinik then after that you had um bronsten who was also he was not the world champion but they fought for the world championship match who was also from the ussr then tal came in then uh, smislov petrosian spasky you know all these people were there uh spasky was there and so fisher 
wanted to dismantle the Russians. And in the sort of the qualifyings, you can say the interzonals where he was reaching or you, uh, candidates through which he was reaching the finals, he had already beaten very strong players. <clears throat> he had beaten Larson 6 nil. He had beaten Taimano 6 nil. And now this was the final hurdle before meeting the great Spassky in the World Championship match. And so Petrosian, very, very strong player. Uh, the match started off with um, Fisher winning the first game, then Petrosian winning the second game. So it was 1-1. Then three draws and everyone was like, wow, this is going to be really, really intense. Two and a half points each out of five games. And then Fisher was like, okay, now it's time to run. And he won the four games, remaining four games. Uh, and he won the match with six and a half, two and a half. It was unbelievable. We are going to watch the seventh game over here in this match. And your task is going to be to guess the moves. And it is one of those amazing games where Fisher managed to showcase his brilliance. Okay. Uh, so let's start and I'm going to ask you a question. First of all. Yeah, Ashwat, thank you for joining in and please do check the analysis later. So the first move that Fisher played as white is what's the move guys? White to move first move. Because you all know what was Fisher's favorite move with white. J. Joshi, no, not D4. Come on. All those who know Fisher would know the first move that was played in this game. You know, Fisher had this famous quote which said, Best by test. And he always used to open his games with. But before I do, let me start this. And also let me get the names on the screen. Guys, and don't check this game online. Try to solve with me and try to think. I would say the people who are very serious about this and have a chessboard at home, please place it on your side and make the moves on the board and try to think. Take the white color on your side. Yes, E4, best by test. That's how Fisher opened his game. Now the move that was played was c5 and this is known as the French defense. So Petrosian played the French uh, It's a very strong opening, uh, a very solid opening. So knight to f3 was played and Varsia Kushbu chess says I have a notebook and a pen and a chessboard by my side. Yeah, good idea to have a chessboard and notebook and a pen on the side. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, good, good. Wonderful Kazakh, Shubham Pandey, Prajwal Shetty, Ved Jadav, everyone says, no, 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 it's Sicilian. Fantastic, guys. My, I wanted to see whether you are awake or not, so I said it's the French. So the French, of course, begins with E6, but the fact that so many people said Sicilian C5, it means that you are not sleeping. Very good, very good. I'm very glad. Because early in the morning, many times people sleep and I'm like, oh, let me put this. So knight to f3 was played and he played the move e6. Now we know that e6 has one family of openings and d6 has the other family of uh, variations in the Sicilian. Now what happens is d6 is more ambitious. The reason being that you see all the pawns are covering the dark squares here. When you play e6, one pawn covers the dark square, other pawn covers the light square. So it becomes more positional in nature. It's more solid. And uh, this family of variations with e6 are known as Taimanov, Khan, Paulson, all of these. Okay. So now he played d4 in this position and he played the open Sicilian. So take. Knight takes and here was the move that uh, was played is also one of the favorite moves of my wife. It leads to Sicilian Khan. Do you know what the move is here for black? Still not for points. We will reach a position for points. But what is the move here? Yes, Amai Kanitkar, Ved Jadav, Fluffy Giant. Absolutely right, guys. Absolutely right. A6 was the move. 
Knight c6 is known as the Taimano. Okay, whenever you play, it's also one of the main lines, but he played a6. Now, knight uh, here, Fisher played a very interesting move. Usually, you would go knight c3, or there's another move which is c4. But what white says is that I'm not yet sure whether I want to push c4, whether I want to put my knight here, and so I'm going to put my bishop on d3, which is a good square for my bishop. So, this is actually a very interesting opening. Uh, idea against the Khan. I like it because generally white quickly castles and then starts pushing his pawns on the king side like f4 and so on. Now knight to c6 was played in this position and this is your first point now. What do you do here as white? White to play, what do you do? So please write down your moves in the comment section uh, in the chat. e3 is what many people are saying bishop e3 also possible knight b3 is also okay but the only one shubham shah you cannot castle shubham because if you castle then you lose the knight here on d4 remember this is a very important moment in the game because okay knight b3 is fine not a bad move bishop e3 is also okay but the best move here and one which Fisher played and you get a full point if you said that move is knight takes c6. And uh, the, the reason for knight takes c6 is that after you take, pawn takes, usually black will take, you know, if you play d takes c6, it's like moving away from the center and so black usually takes with the b pawn. So that he can play d5 later on. Now, white to move here, white simply castled. So Fisher actually by taking on c6 did strengthen black's center because now black can take in the center and play d5, but in return gain time. And that is very important. So he castled and black played d5. Now, time for your second point in this position. What do you play here with white? White to move, second point. I hope that uh, you will think about this very carefully and come to a solution. White to move. Funny Verma says e5. Rishu Badoni says f3. e5. Jaiwardhan Singh, interesting move. Knight c3, Jagmeet Siddhu, King h1, Knight d2, so many different. So, so you can just imagine that this position has so many possibilities. Now, if you think about it, think about it very carefully. Okay. Suppose, and you have castled here. So, you have a lead in development. Black's king is still in the center. When the opponent's king is in the center, what should you do? Guys. What should you do? Varsya Kushbu says rookie one because the king is on the file here. Very interesting thought. Not a bad idea. But somehow when you will take, he will take back with the C pawn. It's not so easy to open up. But not a bad move. Yes, whenever the king is in the center, you open up the position. You open, open the center. And how do you open it? Now think. Now think, how do you open the center? Of course, one way is to take already. But taking kind of, um, how do you say, releases the tension. Because let's say if black were to take in such a position on e4, white would be very happy because bishop e4, he attacks this weakness now on c6 and that pawn becomes weak. And so once you realize that you have to open the position, then you find this move very important move which is c4 well done everyone who said c4 gets the full point i would also give half a point to rookie one 
also half a point to knight c3 because these are all good moves developing moves f4 i am a little bit apprehensive about this move yet not sure but i think queen e2 deserves a full point so all these moves are good but c4 gets the full point so well done guys all those who said c4 get full points okay so now petrosian was like hmm he is trying to open the position and whichever way I take, it will ruin my structure because my c6 pawn will become isolated. Isolated is a pawn which doesn't have pawns on either side of it. It's alone. It's weak. So therefore, he simply developed a piece. Now Fisher said, okay, time to open up. The king is still in the center. I'm going to open up the position. So he took on d5. Black took back. e d5. And here I was very surprised actually with uh, Petrosian's decision. He took with the pawn. And for me, it seemed like why would you take with the pawn? First of all, you get an isolated pawn all alone. In fact, here your pawns are all together. Why don't you take with the knight? And I felt that this should be the right way to continue. But maybe, maybe in such a position after knight c3, White somehow has this lead in development, which maybe Petrosian was not comfortable about. Like you take, take, bishop D, bishop e7. Now next move you want to castle. But then white goes queen f3 first, attacking the rook. So you're like, oh my god, rook is attacked, let me save it. So you play rook, e, uh, rook a7. Then out of, out of a blue, rook b1 comes. Okay, you quickly say, now I can castle. But then bishop e3 attacks the rook. The rook doesn't have a very good square to go to. Rook d7, bishop b6. You see how the lead in development translates into black pieces suddenly getting very passive. Okay. And uh, after bishop c2, you can imagine that queen e4 attacking here or queen h3 might lead to some sort of a pressure on the black king. Okay. So I would have still taken knight d5 in this position. Also, the queen could have taken in this position. It's also not a bad move, guys. But Petrosian said, I want to take on d5 with the pawn. Don't agree. Now, let's see here. It's not for points yet. What is the move that you want to play? <laughs> Exquisite Corpse says, Petrosian is the weirdest chess player I have ever tried to study. His logic is from another universe. Yeah, well... I think most of the world champions who are uh, into all these little moves like Karpov, also Smyslo, sometimes their moves, the games are not so easy to understand because they think very deeply. Yes, rookie one is not a bad move, guys. Rookie one, fantastic. Putting the rook on a half open file and giving a check here. I like this move overall. So I would say not a bad move. Bishop g5 is a move that everyone wants to play. Now, I have seen this sort of bishop move syndrome in a lot of uh, players who are beginning out. Not bishop move, but a long bishop move. They feel like pinning the knight is like a great achievement. But guys, after bishop e7, your bishop is not doing much here. I would rather have it on f4 where it controls this square on the open file for black. No longer the rook can come there. Or, you know, I would wait for it. It's not a very great move. But one thing which I really would love to do is develop this knight on b1 and put it on c3. And this is, I think, a good move because the knight comes to c3. It's on a good square. Bishop e7 was played. And now came a very, very interesting move. And I think a move which Fisher was very proud of. Queen a4 check. You see, before the king could castle, he already went in and played a check. Now, if black would have played bishop to d7 and which he should have played, then I think what he was afraid of was queen d4, putting pressure on the d5 pawn. And already, it seems like white is doing well after bishop e6, bishop f4. I prefer white. And this is something which we discussed Yeah, when the isolated pawn exists, it's alone. There are no pawns on either side of it over here as well. And therefore, the square in front of the isolated pawn becomes very weak. So the queen sits there like a boss. 
And so bishop f4 is a very good move. And after this, I would say white has a small edge. But what did Petrosian do? Petrosian played queen to d7. Now time for your third point. Guys, alert, alert. All those who are sleeping, put some water on your face. Freshen up because this is an important moment in the game. What do you do here? Uh, someone said, why not pawn push after bishop after knight c3 here well it seems very dangerous very dangerous with the king in the center you're pushing your pawns let's say i go knight e4 it's already very bad rook e1 may come in so you don't push your pawns so come back come coming back here queen d7 look everyone here so happy so sharp i mean i can't believe that the entire chat is so smart so sharp let me let me call out a few names because so many of you, Jatin Sachdev, Raghav Bansal, Albino Heron, Ved Jadav, Gunj Mehta, Mitesh Borkhetarya, Torin Keenan, Peter Kavano, Rishabh Mathur, Arpit Nandi, Kaushik Kumar De, Samhita, Snehashish. Man, so many people and all of you suggesting the move Bishop B5. Guys, this is so cool. Bishop to B5. And look at this. It's pinned the queen against the king. And then if you take now, you must take, right? You can't take with the queen. You will lose the queen here with the knight. And if you take with the pawn, then I play queen takes a8 and I'm exchange up. Isn't this super cool? Isn't this super cool? But all those who played bishop b5 get zero points. Sorry. <laughs> Very sorry. <laughs> Very sorry, guys. Bishop b5 loses you the point and this is where Fisher's unbelievable understanding comes into the picture he did not go for the material you know the move he played here rook to e1 and oh, did anyone say rook to e1 in this position this is the best move here bishop f4 is also a good move now the reason why bishop b5 is not good is because after a b queen a8 castles and i i don't blame you guys for for doing this because in a way even i would have done this even many strong players would have done this but what fisher understood is that for giving up the exchange i have given black freedom he will put his bishop on b7 maybe his queen will jump to g4 attack here with the bishop pawn can come to d4 the other pawn can come to b4, knight can jump to e4. So, you know, all these possibilities suddenly got a lot of activity in the position. Now, I don't say that this position is bad for white. In fact, a move like queen a5 and it might very well be that black is white is doing completely fine. But the nature of the position is changed. You know, let's say after a move like uh, b4 here, knight e2 could be possible or i might even go very active with d4 knight b5 bishop b7 you see that my queen could come here attack here and fisher didn't want to get into all these things it's uh this understanding of when activity is not required to be given to the opponent shows highest level of chess understanding Fisher understood that his position is better already and he need not go for this move bishop to b5. And so he played the move rook e1. Okay. Now, he took here. So white took back knight a4. And now you can't castle. This is the point. Yeah. If you castle, I just take the bishop for free. So black said I'll go bishop to e6 in this position. White now played this nice move bishop to e3 and black finally castled now time for your fourth point remember we are into an end game now so here sort of middle game ish end game you have to play logically you have to play well and you don't have to make too many mistakes because if you do a lot of poor moves then black can quickly play rook b8 rook c and he may equalize the game so you have to be careful So what do you play here? White to play 
this is your fourth point in the position what's your move guys how many how many of you here are actually playing with the chess board on the side you know i can imagine that i'm teaching here or i'm i'm talking here and you have a chess board by your side where you have arranged the pieces and you are actually thinking what and then when i say think you are like oh i'm thinking on the board how many naman binawat says me oh nice nice rishab asati preksha bora rajiv ranjan very nice very nice many of you woke up and are just watching on your mobile phone like in the bed <laughs> peter cavanos says i have before not today guys try this out you know with a chess board it can be really really cool uh, to think it will be like a real game like feel okay so now the position here is very very interesting because both sides have two bishops now can anyone tell me which is black's good bishop is it the one on e6 or is it one on e7 <laughs> anand shri rangam says i'm standing with a brush in my mouth amai says i have an exam in 10 minutes ooh which is black's good bishop black's good bishop is the one on e7 e7 is a good bishop because it is not hindered by its own pawn here on d5 while the d5 bishop is not a good bishop so here you may really want to exchange the e7 bishop for your own bishop and that is why all those who said the move bishop to c5 well done guys you get a full point and this game is a lot about what are the pieces that remain on the board not what are getting exchanged okay we'll come to this in more detail later now rook f8 was played in this position so one point to bishop c5 all those who said bishop c5 full point knight c5 also not a bad move but won't get a full point i would say this is the best take uh, sorry rook f8 take on e7 rook e7 and now the question for your fifth point what do you do uh exquisite corp says you want to block with bishop d4 not a bad idea not a bad idea but then once again it doesn't do much in the position because he still has this bishop rook c8 rook b8 this is how black would continue i don't think that that's a bad move also i would give a half point for this just like knight c5 but bishop c5 is more thematic exchanging those bishops all those who say rook c1 very good very interesting move but once again try to think a little deeper rook c1 is not a bad move but fisher's move is better let's see how many of you find the best move varsia khushbu very good you have found uh, the first move i don't like your second move but first is good bishop f5 now this is one of those moves where you are hoping against hope that your opponent will take this and you will get an exchange guys opponent is not your i will i'll always make you remember this Op opponent is not your dash what does dash mean and that will really help you to never consider bad moves for your opponent opponent is never your guys yes friend 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 <laughs> someone said dad no it's friend because if you think it this way that opponent is not my friend then you will see a move like king f8 and you will be like really did i want to play bishop f5 because now he's really threatening with his rook defended and if i take on e6 he takes back with the pawn and this little isolated pawn here which was all alone suddenly got a friend for himself ah i don't want this i don't want this so that's the reason why it's very important not to play bishop f5 the right move in this position and as 
many of you pointed out is b4 and b4 is a, like a restraining move now what does it restrain what does this pawn restrain in the position can anyone tell me what does the pawn on b4 restrain in the position yes the move a5 very good guys very good the pawn on b4 fixes the pawn on a6 which is continuously attacked by the bishop also if you think about it a5 which looks natural will be met with b5 suddenly this pawn is a passed pawn what is a passed pawn p a s s e d passed pawn is a pawn which has no opponent's pawn that can stop it so now that this pawn is passed, it cannot be stopped by any other pawn and it's a very strong pawn. So therefore, b4 was a very cool move by Fisher. Petrosian said, okay, let me play my king here. Fisher put his knight on c5. Also, one of the ad additional advantages of playing b4 is that your knight now has a secure square on c5. Very, very good square. Keeping an eye on this bishop. Of course, you don't want to take it now. Because taking it would mean that black improves his position. But you know this concept of tension always. This concept of tension is so so critical for you to understand. I have been talking about it in previous sessions as well. The fact that the knight actually has pressure on the bishop here. And the bishop cannot take the knight. It means the tension favors white. And he can take it whenever he wants to. And this is a very important thing in chess. Okay, Black said, I don't want to be under tension. Perpetual tension is not good for my health. I have an anxiety disorder. So I go back to C8. At the same time, I know it's passive, but I want to defend my A6 pawn. Meanwhile, I want to exchange perhaps one pair of rooks, then get my other rook like this, if possible. You know, all these are thoughts in Petrosian's head. Time for sixth point, guys. Sixth point for you. What is the move? that white can play here beautiful move beautiful move all those who will find this move i'm going to be very very impressed it's one of those moves where you bring in all your pieces into the game rook c1 is the most natural move but guys try to think about it this way if whenever black takes here you may have to take with your rook and maybe the move rook c1 is not kind of got wasted in a way it's not a bad move at all by no stretch of imagination king f1 is very interesting move the point is you're bringing your last piece into the game because the king also should take part in the battle but look at now now look at this you want to get your king you also have the knight at some points maybe jumping to e4 not now but at some point could so how about trying to stop that as well as activating the king? Let's see how many of you find the answer now. Vishal Amlani, well done. Exquisite Corpse, Funny Varma, Kushbu, Manav Desai, Brain Waves Chess Club, Alfredo Garcia, Vinayak Marar. Well done, guys. All the people who said the move F3, fantastic job. Fantastic. What are you doing? You're just bringing your king up. King to f2. And that bring that makes it so much better. You know, the king will come into the game. Petrosian suddenly goes there with the rook. I don't know why he played it. It was like, he's, a, he's maybe thinking of playing a5. Maybe just avoiding the exchange. And so, I would have gone king f2 here. But Fisher played uh, the move rook e5. Now came the move. Bishop d7. Guys, here's your seventh point in the game. You don't know what you are actually looking at right now. Okay, I'm going to recreate the situation for you. So, Bishop d7 was played. What is your move here for white? What is your move for white here? Think, think, think. Rook a1, rook b1, bishop f5. 
okay interesting knight takes d7 g4 also was suggested knight a6 guys remember never ever give up two pieces for a rook and pawn without reason here the problem is you lost two pieces for a rook and black can also blockade these pawns with his bishop and rook it's not a good idea to give up give it up like this not a good idea so don't go for this also keep the tension keep the tension threat is better than execution a4 people are saying a4 okay now imagine this situation okay let let me let me bring more imagine you see fisher and uh, Petrosian on the screen okay I'm going to change it to another picture okay let me see if I can get it here look at this imagine the city of Buenos Aires okay capital of Argentina this is where the match was happening now there's this big hall in which Petrosian is sitting there okay you can imagine now this is the this is the playing hall opponent is the is bobby fisher extremely confident having beaten opponents like larson considered one of the best in the world taimanov another world class beating them six nil here he is sitting in front of petros and you you see fisher always very stylish a lot of confidence on the board and here you can see the commentators of course players can't hear them but all these soviet commentators they're like oh fisher is playing very well here and okay this is a lot of uh, australian commentary but fisher is playing very well here and he is putting pressure on petrosian petrosian has an isolated pawn the bishop is not so good the knight is very good on c5 all of this big pressure pressure on the a6 pawn bishop on d3 also putting pressure on a6 and all of a sudden fisher goes in there and takes the bishop on d7 and what do the soviet commentators say oh my god fisher does not understand chess chess knight superior to the bishop bishop very bad piece no future to the bishop he should have played the move a4 here gaining space in the position and you know they were all commentating like this and fisher on a great style on the board he goes and he chops the bishop on d7 and everyone is surprised like how did fisher actually take this very bad bishop <laughs> people are saying <laughs> minus 50 <laughs> guys i'm trying to create the scene okay it's not acting there's no acting here the point is after rook takes d7 now a very important point i've been talking about tension and all of this i've been saying that look the knight has the tension on the bishop the bishop cannot take the knight why did then why did then fisher take on d7 can anyone explain to me in one line why this move knight takes d7 is better <laughs> okay i do you want me to do accent of soviet commentator i'll do it i'll do it anyone anyone sagarowski no, not to re remove a defender from a6 pawn. No, that's not the reason. Can anyone explain to me in one line? It's also a very philosophical statement I'm going to make now. Bishop is superior. No, the knight was actually better. And in fact, I'll tell you one simple thing here. That actually a4 uh, is considered to be the best move in this position. In fact, Karsten Müller the great endgame expert of the current era from Germany has written an article on this as to is knight takes d7 a mistake by Fisher you know was a4 winning and his analysis show that a4 was a much superior move but thinking about it why would Fisher such a great player such a great champion take this and all the Soviet commentators like oh my god how did Fisher make this move the point is after rook takes d7 it's not what 
goes outside the board that is important it's what remains on the board that makes that is the most important yes the knight was superior to the bishop but now they are out they are gone what is left on the board the bishop on d3 versus the knight on f6 the bishop is a superior minor piece here because there are pawns on both sides of the board you see there are pawns on both sides of the board and whenever that happens the bishop becomes much more superior much superior to the knight okay very important and remember this not just on the chess board but also in your life okay sahil patkar said i already said this very good sahil so in life you say oh my god this tragedy happened to me this has happened whatever has happened is the past okay it's gone what matters is the present right now and so what is on the board you try to look at that like in this position you have a bishop versus knight and that is most it's a philosophical way of looking at it i'm sure fisher did not look at it that way a lot of people have analyzed this position and said maybe fisher did not like a4 because black goes a5 b5 and then the knight on c5 becomes slightly shaky so after rook c7 which attacks the knight now if you want the knight to stay here then you may have to play rook c1 and this is where one of the theories comes that someone thought fisher may have missed the move bishop takes b5 here i mean he may have seen this move and after bishop takes b5 rook c8 this is what he did not like because if you see here now this knight is pinned and this rook is hanging here you cannot move the knight this this is what maybe fisher so and said oh let me take on d7 he didn't think all this philosophically like oh what remains on the board is more important than what goes outside the board and so on but tell me friends here all of you who are watching white has a very powerful move here what is the move that white can play which can put a big big pressure on black not 96 peter if 96 i just take fe6 very good nihilesh fantastic nihilesh well done is not an easy move knight d7 many of you are saying but after knight d7 knight takes d7 doesn't lead to much doesn't lead to much rook e1 uh, many of you are also saying but i just take the knight you may land up in a pawn down position guys bishop a6 if you play i will play rook take c5 you can't take this rook because then this is hanging if you take on c5 i take back with the rook very powerful move vinayak marar sahil patkar well done guys pako well done the move is g4 and this is such an unbelievable move like for example it's very easy to just forget the other side of the board now if you think about it if i take 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 seems like black has recovered the piece right what is the move that white will play here what is the move that white will play very very powerful move guys think 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 the rook and the bishop they together converge upon a point which is protected by one of black pieces fantastic all in the chat who said the move g5 well done guys g5 brilliant move brilliant move and this move the knight has to move let's say it goes to h5 and now i'm going to i'm going to give you a pleasant feeling in the morning you know checkmating the opponent is the ultimate pleasure i feel so what's the move here what is the move for white in this position can you can you find it yes very good very good rook e8 i believe everyone in the chat has found it check and mate and by the way if opponent also tries to stop it here uh g4 with the move h6 we don't stop we go g h4 we don't stop 
and once that happens you see g5 is still coming in and if you were to move your knight away then i will take the d5 pawn defending my knight and it's all over so done so this does not work uh, so a4 was definitely the stronger move but Fisher took on d7. What a bad move. Fisher's understanding of chess. Not good. Not good. That's what the Soviet people said. But Fisher was like, hey, I don't care, buddy. I'm just playing rook c1 now. And he played his rook to c1, taking the open file. And now rook was played to d6. Again, d4 might have been the superior move because the knight will come to d5, put the knight on c3. Let's say a variation that I can show king f2. Knight d5, a3, defending b4, rook d6, g3, knight to c3, and rook a5. White has big pressure on the position. a6 is weak. Rook can move to e1. It's a great position, but still somewhere you feel that black has chances. Black has fighting chances. But Petrosian didn't play d4. He went rook to d6. And now, time for the eighth point, guys. Eighth point, what's your move? <laughs> Sagar drank Russian water again. No, guys. No water. No Russian water in my house right now. Rook d6. What's the move here? Someone asking what is the time for? Guys, the timer is basically the fact that I must finish the analysis in that much time. So, now remember. Certain things in life do not have meaning on their own. Okay. <laughs> For example, money. On its own, money is worthless. What do you do? Money. Oh, money is lying down in the house. Say someone came today and told me, hey, look, this 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 is just a paper. This is nothing. Oh my like, I like what? I earned I I did one hour of learn from classics. People sent super chats. I earned this. Like, yes, but now these are just paper. You can play with it. You can do whatever you want. It's no longer money. Like, oh my God, what the hell? Same way, open file on its own has no value. Yeah, money gets value from the fact that you spend it. Same way, open file gets its value from the fact that the rook can penetrate and the rook can go to the seventh rank. So in this position, the rook goes to c7 and all those who said rook c7 full point to you remember the main aim of an open file is the fact that you can reach the seventh rank it's called the seventh heaven the rook has reached the seventh heaven the other rook is ready to come in okay <laughs> demonetization exactly guys demonetization is a perfect example of this now imagine at some point someone tells you in chess that seventh uh, rank is no longer important you'll be like what but you told us that won't happen as long as the rules of chess remain the same as long as all the pawns are on the seventh rank the rook when it moves to the seventh it will create problems it also cuts off the king by the way guys king cannot easily move now he went here knight d7 attacking the rook be calm be patient let's come back what's the hurry g6 now i want you to find this move it's not for points but i want you to play it and i will be very impressed with all of you who say this move white to play what is your move here all those who are saying oh my god i'm finding all the moves here but on the board i'm unable to do so guys you have to keep practicing it will happen it will happen just be calm What is the move? B5, Peter, I would say A6 is a weakness. Why do you want to play B5? Because after takes, takes, somehow spoils it. You know, you want to keep it. Tension, tension in the position. Let's keep it here for the time being. Unless you have something very concrete. No one, yeah? No one's coming up with this move. Guys, calm chess. Bring in all the pieces. Whenever you feel, whenever you feel that in a position I'm not able to find the right idea, just 
improve your worst paste placed piece this is well placed this is well placed this is well placed which is the piece that is not well placed improve it manit mohapatra says black lotus should be on your background <laughs> i don't i don't want to you know i'll tell you a small uh, story later yesterday uh, okay not later now while everyone oh fantastic everyone in the chat suddenly became like oh my god the king the king is not coming in the game let me bring it well done guys king e f2 is the best move fantastic so the story is uh, amruta and i you know we we have been reading this book i have been telling you yeah lying by sam harris and uh, we enjoy it a lot we we've understood why lying is very bad and all of that and um, more in a more deep sense and then we saw oh sam harris also has an app which is called waking up waking up is kind of black lotus because there you do meditation and all of it so we put that on yesterday and we were like okay let's see what happens and i'll tell you within within like 2 minutes i just dozed off even she dozed off we both slept like for an hour it seems or half an hour we were like oh my god we are fresh amazing is this is this the main aim of the app because that was such a nice sleep so rook c7 king uh, he he improved his king to f2 h5 was played in the position and now fisher played the move f4 okay the idea is at some point i can break the structure with the move f5 mm -hmm. so now h4 guys yeah, not sponsored content yeah no, not sponsored a big fan of uh, sam harris like him a lot understood a lot of things from his books and stuff so nothing sponsored here so uh h4 king f3 he improved his king he's threatening to come to g4 and pick up this pawn f5 stopping that king from coming in now what did fisher play here still not for points last two points left i just want you to understand because you see fisher has been using his king very well he came here he came here he forced some pawn moves every pawn move can create a weakness so there are more weaknesses and now what do you do what do you do in this position g4 yeah not a bad move not a bad move but you know what petrosian said hey look my king's work on the king side seems to have done been done he cannot enter here and yeah i can play g4 but i don't really want to do it right now it's not a bad move it's not a bad move guys but g4 maybe a g a g then you go again g4 sort of chip at this structure but fisher said i'll go king e3 very cool move king e3 the idea is to place the king on d4 where it will be a monster you know once the king is on d4 if all the rooks get exchanged somehow on the open file then the king just waltzes in first of all d5 becomes weak but the king can also waltz in and pick up these pawns so king e3 is a fantastic move d4 is what petrosian played and he's like don't bring your king near me i'm pushing you back fisher said okay thank you i'm coming here but the fact that you pushed the pawn to d4 means that now my bishop has more scope you know every move has its drawbacks you only have to check it carefully now knight to b6 was played now for your ninth point guys what should white play and now i'm not going to give you any hints please find the move carefully white to play think a bit what is the best move here peter cavano says why did he waste a tempo playing king f3 that's what top players do peter the thing is that if you played here directly king here then black had not played f5 and the fact that f5 is in the position weakens e6 square weakens many many things like even the g6 pawn becomes weak 
G5 square weakens and therefore Fisher was very smart. He said King F3 coming to G4, coming to G4 to take your pawn. F5, thank you very much, coming to E3. You know, it's these little nuances where you weaken your opponent's structure makes you a very, very good player. So, knight b6 and what is the move here? What is the move? No, top players don't waste tempo. Top players actually provoke weaknesses by moves that look like waste, but they are not. 7th heaven, guys, yes. 7th heaven, bring the other rook in. Look at these two rooks. Have you, play, have you played those games, uh, uh, that game? Recently, I played with my nephew. It's called Hungry Hippo. It's like these hippos, uh, you, you keep pressing that button and the hippos open their mouth and try to gobble the little marbles, little balls there. And it's the same with the two rooks on the seventh rank. They are like hungry hippos. They want to take all the, everything that is there. Of course, here there are no pawns, but here there is a huge, huge payoff. And the payoff is the black king. If imagine a rook goes to h7 and h8, it's checkmate. It's that lawnmower mate which we have learnt. We have Jaydeep Chakrabarti in the chat, the guy who's made all these mating pattern cards. This checkmate is on the cards. But a move that you would be very, very afraid of is knight d5 because knight d5 forks the two rooks. Did you spot it? If you did, what was your idea here? Why are you allowing me to fork your rooks? Uh, Paco, if you played rook h7 instantly, maybe you would have gone king g8 there. Possibly it was also not bad, but rook e7 is really cool. Bringing you. Yes, very good. Check and get out. Check and remove one of the rooks from the fork. He goes to g e8. And now what do you do? Not for points, but just to understand, you know, guys, feel it. When you, when you want to finish off, imagine yourself playing Petrosian the great Soviet master, the man who was the world champion. And this guy, you, you have to finish him off. And you need the confidence of Fisher to take on these great players. Yes, rook to b7. Now you see, both the rooks are away from the knight's eye. And remember, when you are at a distance of one square on a diagonal, the knight cannot attack you easily. So the, both the rooks are now very safe on b7 and f7. Also, big threat incoming is to simply move the rook here and checkmate. So, black could have played a move like rook b8. Now, this is very, very funny. But the point is, if you take on b8, I'll take on f7. That's my plan. It's still better. In fact, the better move would be rook a7 here. And white is clearly winning. Let's say knight f6. I can just strengthen my position, a3, go slow, everything is fine. But Petrosian was like, Fisher, you've given me a pawn. What's the plan? I'm taking this pawn. And now for the final point in the game, 10th point, what was Fisher's move here? Final move, Fisher to play and win the game. What did Fisher do here? Yeah, so basically the thing is if you go rook b8, rook here, rook a8, then I would take, take, and then I would take, maybe play bishop c4, pin the knight, and later on pick up this pawn. I think this is just clearly winning position. So if he would to take, were to take on b4, then after rook h7, this mate cannot be stopped. So that's why that was the problem. But after knight f4, all the people, all the people who found this move now, bishop c4, fantastic job. See, you want to play rook h7. It's a good move. You want to checkmate him. But then he goes knight e6. You give a check, he blocks it. Unhappy. So what I do is, I play my bishop to c4. Now if you go knight e6, I'll just play e7 check and pick up your knight. So you cannot, your knight is dominated. Do you see that? The knight cannot come back. Once the knight is dominated, next move I'm going here and here, game over. 
game over. There is no way in which black can do anything after bishop c4. In fact, this is where, so like for example, if you go knight h5, I just want you to think about what is the move here for white. Petrosian already resigned, but what's the move? How to finish off your opponent? This is a perfect example of how two rooks on the seventh rank are extremely powerful, extremely powerful. What's the move? Yes, Vinayak Marar, Chess with Have, Rashmita Pradhan, Raghav Lard, Deep Nara and Banerjee, Hema Lata, T. Varma, Ved Jadav, Samhita, Manthan Kapoor, Vardhan Shah. Is it something that today's chat has become strong or it always was? Because today I found like all of you giving so many correct moves. Rook H7. With the idea of rook h8, the mate cannot be averted. Like let's say if you go rook here, then I give a check, rook f8. Once again, white to play and mate in two moves. Who finds this? Who finds this? Come on. <laughs> Aaron saying it always was. Chat was always strong. Okay. Okay, guys. Yes, yes, absolutely. And here, fantastic. Look at this. Everyone saying Bishop F7. Tremendous, guys. You see the rook is pinned here. So it cannot take this bishop. If it cannot take, the king cannot go up because this rook covers it. So it has to go here. And what a picturesque mate. What a picturesque mate. If anyone told you, please make an advertisement for the rooks on the 7th rank. Show them this position. This is the perfect advertisement for rooks on 7th rank. With one rook covering the 7th, the other rook attacking. This is watchman as I like to call it. This is the killer here who is de delivering the death blow. And that is all over. So this is how the game end ended. And um, yeah, after bishop c4, Petrosian resigned. And you know, this is the kind of play you need to beat players like Petrosian. Fisher really played amazing chess. Um, I would say the most important thing that to learn is that first of all, not wasting time in the opening, taking on c6, castling, breaking open the position when the opponent's king is still in the center. Then very important move. Not to be greedy with bishop b5, guys. Rook e1. This was unbelievable move. Beautiful move. And then you play bishop c5 because your opponent's bishop is a better bishop. Is a, is a good one. This is a poor bishop here. So you exchange it. Then push the pawn to b4. Restraining there. Knight c5. f3. Very important. Bringing the king into the game. Rook e5. And now, dear friends, it's important. What remains on the chessboard is much more important than what goes outside it. And therefore, knight takes d7. Remember, guys, I always have two things which conflict each other. I'm told you today. One is keep the tension. I keep on telling you, keep the tension, guys. Why are you taking this? Don't take this pawn. You have the tension. You can take it anytime. Here, you have the tension. Why? And... Then I tell you, it matters what remains on the board more than what goes outside it. It conflicts. And I'm not saying that it doesn't. You know, I'm not like, oh, everything is good and all of that. Chess is difficult, guys. Chess principles always conflict with each other. That's where your expertise comes into the picture. That's where you have to decide what is the right way to play. And that is why chess is not easy. And therefore, a4 here is still objectively the best move as we looked at. But he took, took, rook c1 and then rook went to the 7th heaven, guys. Remember, 7th heaven. And now, this little probing move, king f3 as we saw, provoking f5, then going to the other side, coming back, rooks jumping into the 7th rank. And now, finally, bishop c4, blocking the knight, threatening rook h7, rook h8 mate. And Petrosian resigned this game 
Fisher managed to win the match, challenged Spassky 1972 game of the century, became the world champion, never played chess again. Ha! <sighs> what a man, yeah, what a man. Whenever I think of Fisher as the chess player, I feel like, oh my God, it would be so unbelievable to meet him, to interview him, to talk to him, to maybe play with him. You know, so many things. But then, you know, Fisher, the person who he was, it's also a big tragedy, you know. He was such a great player, but he couldn't play after becoming the world champion. Well, that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you loved it. I myself enjoy this classic session very much in the morning. Would you like it to be a daily thing, thrice a week? How would you like it? Can you tell me? What would you prefer? Yeah, last one minute left. Exquisite Corpse says, wonderful lesson. Thanks from the USA. Thank you so much, Exquisite Corpse, for watching this. Samya Jeep Day says, after bishop c4, what about any 6 blocking the bishop? Samya Jeep, if you go knight e6, there is rookie 7 check. That's what we saw here. Rookie 7 and then pick up the knight. That was the point. Loud it daily, daily, daily. Okay. Interesting. Daily, thrice a week should be good. Daily, thrice a week. Weekly. Ooh, weekly, yeah. Weekly, once a week might be a bit too less, I guess. Because there's so many classics to cover. If we do once a week, we can only cover 52 in a, in a year. Well, if I do it like maybe thrice a week, we can at least cover three times. Yeah, let's, let's try to... Um, yeah, I, I will try to do it thrice a week, perhaps. Uh, today, I, I may go in the afternoon to meet um, two individuals who have come to Mumbai. In fact, one of them was always Suhani Shah and Karan Singh Magic, who is in Mumbai. So maybe I'll join them uh, to meet them. Let's see. Let's see in the afternoon. But uh, I'll keep you guys updated. And thank you all for joining in. Time is up. Time is up. Very nice. I managed my time well today. I'm happy with that. And we have a final super chat. Jaydeep Chakravarti says twice a week, at least we will have some time to replay the games. I also want to create an articles out of this. And also, as I have previously mentioned, we are working on some kind of a portal where we can put all these materials of our YouTube channel along with things that can provide you more material to think like working um, sort of exercises and this is what we, we are working on it's a, it's a huge project because if you think about it 4000 videos and all of it but yeah we'll try to do it until then guys take care see you bye bye